So High Tension tells the story of two college girls who go home for a weekend of studying, and that all gets ruined by a deranged and psychopathic serial killer. Well guys, welcome to another patron sponsored review. This review is sponsored and chosen by Michael Aiello, a very long time contributor of mine and I believe a brand new patron as of late, but he's always been a very active member as far as the comment section and kind of messaging me on the side asking about movies and stuff. So Michael Aiello has been a very good subscriber to my channel for quite a while that I've had quite a bit of interaction with. And I'm not only doing this because he's a patron, because he requested it, but also it's kind of a way to raise his spirits a bit because Michael, unfortunately, has been having some, uh, some health scares here recently and uh, hasn't been given the best of news regarding those as far as what he's told me. So aside from talking about the movie down below in the comment section, everybody that watches this, please give Michael some good prayers, some good thoughts, however you want to send him some good spirits down in the comment section below, and hopefully you get some good news soon, Michael. But until then, let's talk about high tension. You wanted to know my thoughts on it? Hopefully this doesn't anger you, but this movie was infuriating. Whoops, did I let the cat out of the bag too soon? Let's back up. Let's talk about some things that I liked about High Tension. So, I will say this. This is a movie by the director Alexander Aha. This is the guy that kind of is famous more so for his Hills Have, Hills Have Eyes remake and his Piranha remake, um, amongst a couple other movies. I think he did Mirrors, he did a couple others. But this is the one that kind of launched him into the horror scene as far as getting his name out there. And it's mostly because he is a guy that likes to put very brutal gore effects on screen. And I'm a fan of that. If it's utilized well, that is cool. And that is one thing I would say about High Tension is that it is a very bloody, crazy, intense movie from start to finish. And I believe a lot of that is because of Alexander's direction. So I like the fact that he kind of has this very down and dirty, gritty kind of grindhouse look about the film, the way that he shoots it, the way that he kind of styles it. It feels down and dirty from the beginning. It's like that original Maniac film where you almost feel like you have to take a shower after you get the end of the movie. I like all of that. I like how brutal he makes the killer. Everything regarding how intense and crazy and just graphic that he wants to make this film, I appreciated all of that. I like the main storyline going on with these two girls from the beginning of this movie. You have Marie, you have Alex, they're two college friends, they're going back to Alex's parents' house for the weekend to study. And even before you get into all the craziness, all the horror movie stuff going on, you could tell very early on, through mostly subtle ways until you get to a shower scene, that Marie has at least somewhat of an attraction to Alex. She's either bisexual or homosexual and she has a, a fixation on her best friend. Whether or not Alex knows this or not, they don't really say clearly. She might have a little bit of an understanding that her friend has interest in girls, but they don't really touch on it too much as far as whether or not they've discussed it, whether or not there's any kind of romance budding, or whether or not Alex knows that there's a romance budding. And it's all those questions that make them very interesting characters. Because you have this friendship, they're very clearly good friends, they're going back to this house for the weekend, and the fact that all of a sudden they're thrown into this situation where the serial killer shows up, brutalizes the family and takes Alex and now Marie has to go and save Alex to whatever degree she can. It brings an interesting dynamic because you're wondering, okay, is this driven by friendship? Is this driven by attraction or this kind of secret love? Is the love not going to be that secret? Are we going to find out towards the end of the film when she saves Alex, hopefully? that Alex has the same feelings towards her. There's a lot of things going on behind the scenes aside from the gore and you know the serial killer and the typical horror movie stuff that we kind of came to see that leaves a lot of lingering questions that makes me want to stick through the story to see where those questions kind of get tied up. Do they get answered? Do they get answered in a satisfying way? Is it going to be something where these two girls, their relationship kind of becomes the cornerstone of this film and this ridiculously brutal situation is what brings them together as a couple. A lot of mysterious things going on as far as these two girls. And I touched on it a little bit when I was talking about Alexander Aha and his direction and how he made this film, but I like how unapologetically demented this killer is. They introduce you to this guy by showing him getting head in this fucked up Jeepers Creepers looking truck and then they cap all that off by showing him pull the head out of the fucking driver's windshield and dropping it, showing that he was actually giving himself head with a head. 
Whoa! I mean, I, I've seen some fucked up shit in horror movies, but that's one of those things you'll remember. Getting head from a severed head. Wow, that's creativity. But it also just kind of caps off immediately. This guy's fucked up. He's fucked up in the head. He's brutal. He apparently has no morals whatsoever in any way, shape, or form. And this is before he even starts killing people. So you know as soon as the dude starts actually drawing blood from some of our characters, shit's gonna get real. And that's what makes the guy scary. It's that unpredictability of how far he's gonna go. How much pain is he gonna inflict on these people? How much demented, psychotic shit is about to go on when in a typical movie it would just be quick, kind of glorified kills, probably for comedic effect. But this guy is going to make you feel the pain. And going on from all that, one of my main positives as well, which I touched on the relationship there and the overall story of these two characters, but Marie as your central character, she is a very strong female lead because she's put into this ridiculous situation in this ungodly, brutal situation. And from the beginning, she's very smart about how she handles it. She does certain things to kind of hide herself from the killer while he's actually in this house when he first shows up. Whenever she's on the chase trying to get him, she does a lot of very smart things. And when it comes down to the point where they have to go toe to toe, who is going to come out alive when these two characters bud heads and, you know, trade blows and trade blood? She is a badass. The first thing she does, grab this two by four and wrap a bunch of barbed wire around it and hold it like a bat. And I was like, ooh, that's gonna inflict some damage. And all the way through to when she's actually beating this dude to death and she is fucking him up and she is just inflicting as much pain as possible to make him feel every little ounce of pain that he inflicted on her and her lover is awesome. All of that shit when she's getting back at him, I was like, yes, this is a damn good way to end this movie. Doesn't end there, does it? <laughs> now, sliding into our negatives. Wow, the ending of this movie. The twist. The final, what, 10 minutes of this. Fuck you. <laughs> Seriously. Whoever decided on doing this, whoever wrote the script and said, this is going to translate the screen perfectly. Fuck you. Because no, it does not. So this whole time, we are invested in the character of Marie. We are cheering on the character of Marie. We are... so entertained. And so invested and so, like enamored with how great of a character this is and how much of an arc she's having from this, this regular old college girl to this really strong, almost like Ripley style female lead. And she gets to all the revenge that you could possibly want to see and it's all bloody gloriness on screen with this demented fucker. And not even a minute or two after that, the movie pulls the rug out from underneath you and says, hey, Marie was the killer the whole time. Isn't that cool? No, it's not. Not the way you executed it. I've actually seen written interviews with Alexander Aha, the director of this film, that did not want to film the ending that way. But the cut that we get in this basically is just the last 15 minutes of this movie is executing this twist and showing that Marie is kind of like a dual personality with this big fucking bulky ass weird killer. And it just makes no sense whatsoever. From the beginning of the movie, I've watched the movie twice before doing this review because I wanted to give it a fair shot. I watched it once, not knowing the twist. I watched it a second time, knowing the twist. And from the beginning of this movie, it makes zero fucking sense that this killer does not actually exist as a separate person. Where did this fucking blowjob severed head scene come from? Did she just make that shit up in her head? I mean, I've heard people defend this ending as saying this is her giving her account of what happened in her head that it was somebody else. So she just added in this detail in there that, oh, while we were driving down the road miles from this house, this fucking guy in a random ass van that I thought of was giving himself head with a severed uh, head. And, you know, he's the killer, by the way. You know, I just want to let you know that he was doing shit before we came along. 
Then you get into all the logic reasons of why they cannot be doing things like her driving a car and him driving the fucking van behind her. Where did the van come from in the first place? I mean, I could go on and on and on and on and on. And people that I trust and I respect see it the opposite way. They see this as a perfectly logical ending that this was her account and the twist at the end is just showing you that all of her account that she's telling in this hospital is bullshit. But that's not the way they execute the ending, at least not for me in the two times that I've watched it. So if you see it that way, cool, enjoy it. For me, it pisses me off because it totally fucking tanks everything that I enjoyed about the film up until the last 15 minutes. There has been numerous films with this twist, that there was a dual personality or that it was him the whole time. Fight Club, perfect example. What do they do when they reveal at the end of Fight Club that Edward Norton as the narrator and Tyler Durden are the same person? They show you multiple scenes that we have seen throughout the film that would make that make no sense. They, they show you the actual reality version of what is going on of him being one person to make it make sense. They do the same thing in Mr. Robot. Mr. Robot. He's the fucking dude the whole time. He's Christian Slater. He is Mr. Robot. What do they do at the end of that season? They show you pieces of events throughout the entire season that would make no sense for them, be to, one, for them to be one person, and they show it in a way that it makes sense, and you no longer have that logic issue. This movie doesn't bother to do that. It just says, here's your twist. Wasn't that cool? Fuck you. Good night. No. No. And even beyond the logic issues, it just sucks as an ending to the movie. Not only, I mean, look, to be fair, I've seen this movie in 2018, so it's not like maybe when this came out it wasn't as cliche of an ending, but the whole twist dual personality thing is a cliche by now. That's like a cop-out ending. But you get to this, you have all these things that you're invested in, seeing how the relationship of these two girls is going to withstand this situation, seeing how that love is going to work. Is it gonna be rejected? Is it gonna be accepted? You have no idea. You see this gigantic heroic arc with Marie. All of that gets fucking demolished in seconds when they show her as the killer. And now the only story is, look how crazy this bitch is. That's it. That's not a satisfying ending to the story that we've got for the past 90 minutes. What the fuck? I understand they're probably going for another level of creepy, which is just how demented and how fixated Marie is on Alex that she's created this demented fucked up guy in her own head and did all of these crazy things, pushed a fucking bookshelf into a guy and decapitated him. And yeah, she's got the strength for that. But it just doesn't work. It does not work for me. And apparently it doesn't work for most people that watch this movie. Maybe it's split down the middle. Maybe I shouldn't say most, but there is a fuckload of people that when you say what is a disappointing ending or what's an ending that ruined the movie or what's one of the worst endings of horror movies in history, any time that I have ever seen that list brought up in killer flicks or in other polls anywhere, even before knowing what the twist was, I would always see high tension on that list at least twice. There's a reason for that. Like I said, if you're somebody that can see this ending in a different way, maybe the way they were intending, then awesome. I'm glad the movie didn't get fucked up for you. But for the rest of us, Fuck this ending. And that's really my main negative with the movie. That, that's the main thing that really just kills it for me is just that the way they decided to wrap this up was just like, why? Why would you do that? You could have just followed through in a traditional sense of we got revenge and then actually wrapped up the story of these two girls in a very interesting way regarding their relationship, which is the theme they opened the fucking movie with. And this would be one of those slashers that would be one of those underrated gems that you would recommend to everybody. You gotta see High Tension. There's so many good things about it. It's brutal as hell. There's great relationship characters, all that cool stuff. But this is a movie that most people do not recommend because of that last 15 minutes, unless they're trying to prank somebody. Hey, check out High Tension. It'd be a good time. So I don't know, Michael, if you recommended this just to see if that ending would send me on a rant like it did, or if you genuinely really love this film and was hoping I'd be on your camp. I'm not sure. Let me know down in the comment section below. Hopefully I didn't break your heart, but that is the way that I see this movie after two viewings, unfortunately. Just a gigantic misstep in that last 15 minutes that basically ruins the entire fucking movie for me. So despite all of the incredible things that this movie did, despite all of the traction that it gained for me with its characters and its themes and its overall journey of the character of Marie, unfortunately that final act just ruined all of it for me. This is not a terrible film. There's still a lot of merit to be had, but just because of the experience that I had and the infuriation of why they decided to wrap up the story the way that they did, I'm going to have to recommend that you skip it. 
So what do you guys think of high tension? Do you end up on the side of the camp that loves this ending and thinks it makes perfect sense and you find yourself defending it against assholes like me? Or are you on the end of the camp that's right behind me with your pitchforks and your fucking flares going, what the hell was that? Tell me down in the comment section below. Another huge thanks to Michael Aiello for my uh, support on Patreon, your constant support as a viewer, and for choosing this movie. It was an interesting ride, even though I ended up not liking the film very much, but that's the gamble we take, right? That's the dice roll of films. So thank you for all of that, guys. Please let Michael know down below that we are thinking about him and hope he pulls through with his, uh, his health issues that he's going through right now. And if you guys want to check out some more films like this, please like, share this video, hit that subscribe button if you're not already a subscriber. If you want to check out some social media links for me, you can check down the video description below for Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Spreadshirt for cool Cody Leach merchandise like t-shirts and other merchandise designed by the great Woody Bowen, and my Patreon page, which is how you join in on the fun with Michael and get to do things like have Patreon requests. You can check all that out, guys, and it is a cool way to help this channel grow and get cool exclusive content for your eyes only if you decide to become a patron. And if you want to check out some more of my videos, you can check out a few more by clicking right over here.